Hi, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Underground Reggie. Um, today we have Ashley Myers with us, the writer director of the Pinch. Ashley, say what's up to our audience. Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on to talk to me. Okay, Ashley. So, for the people who don't know about you, can you bring them up to date on how you got started with the film industry? Sure. So, I'm like a typical guy. I grew up in Annapolis, Maryland. Um, you know, didn't know anybody in the in the business. I got done college. Didn't really have a lot of job prospects or have any idea really what I wanted to do. So, I just decided to be a screenwriter. Moved out here in the mid 1990s and um, just started writing scripts and, and trying to sell them. And eventually, I was able to sell a few and um, and, you know, get more, a little more into other things like web development towards the late 90s. I set up a website actually for, um, for my screenwriting with log lines and stuff that I could use to help promote it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that kind of dovetailed into eventually um, setting up a website called sellingyourscreenplay.com. And that's where I kind of chronicle my own screenwriting adventures as well as interview other filmmakers. Um, that's a podcast, as I said, a blog and a podcast. And then... Um, Maybe about two, three years ago, um, I got a couple of writing assignments as a screenwriter, um, and they were just, they were less than fulfilling. Let's put it to you like that. Mm -hmm. And I got them, you know, I got them back to back, um, literally like one of them was in September, one of them was in October, um, of that year. I think it was 2015 and, um, 2016. And, um, and it just, you know, they were just so creatively unfulfilling. I decided, you know what, I'm just going to write something that's super low budget and go and just shoot it myself, write it, direct it, and produce it, and um, and just see if that's more creatively fulfilling. And so that's kind of where I am. I went and did that, um, and I went and shot my own micro budget, you know, crime thriller, sort mm-hmm. of a homage to, you know, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels or Reservoir Dogs. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at now. I've just finished this movie, and now I'm, I'm starting to release it. Okay, so touching on the topic of screenwriting, what inspired you to start your website? Well, so so there's two pieces to that. So the original website I set up was literally just AshleyMyers.com, and again, that was just a log lines and synopsis for my screen for my screenplay, and it was just really just a tool to help sell my screenwriters. I would meet a producer, and I would say, "Hey, you know, go check out my website." I would send them a query letter pitching them a specific project. But in that query letter, I would say, "Hey, if you you know if you like my writing, but this isn't quite a good fit, maybe you'd like one of my other scripts. Check out AshleyMyers.com," and then people would go over there, and I saw over the years that this would actually result in some additional script requests, Mm -hmm. putting this in my emails, mentioning it to people. People would, on occasion, actually check out the website, and they would often, you know, just request another script. I might pitch them one script, that look at the website, request another script. So there was that. At some point during this, um, let's say the last 10, 12 years, um, at some point I wrote a book, and it was the book of all things. It was called Selling Your Screenplay. And, um, and I basically just chronicled my own adventures selling my own screenplays in this book, Selling Your Screenplay. And I started to look around and say, well, how am I going to market this book? Um, it was a, it was a print on demand book, so it was not anything I didn't pursue like a normal publisher or anything like that. But I produced this book, wrote it, produced it, and then, um, got it out there through the print on demand services. So it's on Amazon, these things. But the, the way this print on demand service, they had a lot of tips and tricks. Well, how are you going to market your book? And so they're, one of their big, tips was start a blog and start blogging on the topic that your book is about and then you can you can build an audience and then sell them your book. So mm-hmm. that's really where selling your screenplay dot com came from is I set up and I started selling the book through it, but then eventually it evolved into a blog and then about five years ago it actually morphed into a, po- a weekly podcast as well. Um, so that's kind of my website. Okay, man, that's an awesome story. So I want to switch to topics a little bit, man. How did you get? How did you get to the point where you were doing a film called Snake Out of Compton? <laughs> that's a good question. Okay, so that is one of those projects that was creatively unfulfilling. And okay. I will take a second. And and keep in mind, too, I know the producers on that pretty well, so I'm not saying anything that, frankly, I haven't said to their face. Uh Um, (laughs) Basically, they they approached me, Oh, and and this is a couple, this is over the course of many, many years I've been in contact with these guys. Just coincidentally, I originally met those guys on a movie I did called Ninja Apocalypse, Uh and on that one I just wrote the script, and I'm not even sure... I ever even met them through that, but they were the international sales agent for Ninja Apocalypse, which is a movie that I wrote. So maybe three, four, five years ago, 
six years ago, I was sending out query letters to producers, and I sent them a cold query letter, and I said, by the way, I just wrote this movie, Ninja Apocalypse. Well, they recognized that because that was a movie that they were also working on. So we started to meet um, just over the course of uh, things. They said, hey, we'll come in for a meeting. Maybe we have some projects that you'd be a good fit for. So I just drove down to their office. Um, I live in L.A. Obviously, their office is in L.A. So I drove down to their office, and we just had a meeting. And over the course of the last, you know, from like probably 2012, 2013, over the course of those years, I was just in contact with these guys. Um, and it, it's Michael Warren and Jeffrey Giles over there. Those are the producers on Snake Out of Compton. And... Um, or the executive producers anyways. Um, so I just was in contact with them. And um, and eventually they said, hey, we got this idea for a spoof called Snake <laughs> at a Compton. We've got an idea for a poster. And really that's all they came to me with. They had a couple of sort of loose ideas. They said, hey, well, go ahead and write the first draft of the script. So that was one of these writing assignments. Now what ended up happening, so they did hire me after you know many years, many meetings, many emails. They did hire me to write that first draft. And once we got done the draft, though, they needed to get a director, and they ended up bringing in a director who I have not even seen a finished cut of the film, so I don't know how much of my script is left, but they pretty much told me that there's virtually none of it. Oh. Um, so they bring in a director, and that director brought in all their friends, and they you know, just basically rewrote everything that I had written. And um, and again, that was one of the, the, the things, one of the sort of the the key things in, in making, making me feel like I've got to go out there and... Um, and, and, and make my own projects, be my own producer, my own director, and see my projects through. And I want to be clear, too, these guys, Michael and Jeffrey, they were totally upfront and cool about the whole thing. I mean, there was no surprises. They didn't, like, you know, tell me, like, we kind of know that once the director comes in, he's going to do some rewrites. So it was it was as good as the process could be. I was just not necessarily that happy with it. But I would just really urge people to listen to the story I just told and decide, you know, that's really what professional screenwriting is. It's right. writing scripts for producers and it's taking their notes whether you agree with them or not. And it's going through this process. And, you know, some of the scenes that I thought were just the best scenes in the script, they just, you know, threw them out. They just <laughs> didn't think. They thought they were garbage. Um, so you just, you have to be kind of aware of that and ready for that as you're you're going into um you know these types of projects okay so next question um how would you say the experience helped you with your latest work well as i said i think um it really has led me to my to my latest work i mean it's it, it, <clears throat> I, I think for me it, where i am in my life and my career is that i definitely want to do things that are more creatively fulfilling. And so I would say that's really the biggest lesson I took away from Steak Out of Compton was this wasn't my project. It wasn't my idea. I was basically just a craftsman. You know, I have experience writing screenplays, so they hired me to ply my craft. And that's about all it really was. Um, but it, it definitely, this the, the pinch, you know, my newest film, that is definitely the direction that I decided to go just because I wanted to to have more creative control. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the person that's paying the bill, the person that's raising the money, I mean, they're on the hook for that money. And so that ultimately is the person who's going to make the decisions. If you raise the money, you get to make the decisions. And that's how it should be. I mean, we're talking about, you know, movies are expensive to make and someone has to be responsible for recouping that money and it makes the most sense. It's the right. person, whoever's money it is, you know, that's the person that has to ultimately make those decisions. Okay, so what would you say inspired you to actually come up with the plot for the pinch? So, and, and I, I'm not exactly sure of like the exact moment, but what I do just in my own writing process is I'll come up with just random ideas. And some of these ideas are just bits and pieces of an idea. Um, you know, and I think with the pinch, I originally had this idea for a scene where these guys were were looking for this guy, or they were waiting for this guy. Um, they were waiting basically for him to come home so that they could kill him. And sort of the the twist is that he's hiding in the house and overhearing them have this conversation, like, okay, as soon as he gets here, we're going to kill him. So I had that sort of scene. I didn't really know how it fit in, and I had a couple of other ideas, just sort of random little ideas 
for, for movies. And I put them in this, this idea bank, which all it is is just like a Google Doc sheet, you know, just put it online in a Google document. And, um, and so at some point, as I said, I was going through this process with Snake at a Compton and another project. I said, I want to do something really low budget. So I went back to my idea bank and I do this occasionally. I'll just go back through it and kind of just noodle on some of the ideas I have. And in this case, I think I kind of combined two or three different ideas. But I always, I knew I was going to be, you know, making this at a very, very low budget. So I knew whatever ideas I came up with, they needed to be within the scope of sort of a micro budget film. Okay, so would you say that you're a fan of the mob style films? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I love Reservoir Dogs. I mean, as I was gearing up for the pinch, you know, I went back and watched that movie, you know, two or three, four times. Um, same thing with Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Um, you know, I just, I think those movies are just thoroughly entertaining. I mean, you just kind of have everything, you know, the, there's a little bit of, you know, witty dialogue and, you know, dramatic scenes and humor and, and stuff. So, yeah, those are some of my favorite movies. Um, so it definitely was sort of in that canon of, um, you know, crime thriller, you know, genre picture. Okay, so what's one thing that you would like audience members to take away from actually watching The Pinch? You know, so as you go into these things, like, we're making entertainment, and, um, you know, it may seem trivial to some degree, but, like, at the end of the day, we're just, we're trying to just entertain people and have, a, you know, an emotional experience, um, you know, a genuine, evoke genuine emotions from people, whether that be laughter or, you know, feeling good or feeling sad or whatever it is. And so, you know, that's what I try and do. We're just trying to entertain. We're trying to evoke emotions and, and give people some sort of an experience that they can walk away from and remember. Um, and that's what great movies do. You know, that's what the Shawshank Redemption does. You know, mm-hmm. you watch that movie and it just, it really makes you feel something on an emotional level. Um, and that's, you know, I think at the end of the day, that's what my goal is with these films. Okay, so for our listeners who want to actually go watch the the film and actually would like to purchase the film, can you let them know where they can find it at? Sure, absolutely. So we're releasing slowly on all the video on demand platforms. So it's currently available on um, iTunes. We just released on iTunes um, a few weeks ago. We just released on Amazon a couple of weeks ago. Um, Voodoo, um, Google Play, all of those types of video on demand services. We're in negotiation right now um, for an internet to get an international distributor. So hopefully we'll get some some cable TV deals and that kind of stuff um, you know, over the course of the coming years. But I would say, you know, if you're listening to this now and you're, you're curious about it. Definitely check out the video on demand services. Also, if you go to my blog, um, sellingyourscreenplay.com slash the pinch, all one word, you can go there and you can buy the movie through my website. And there's also an addition you can add if you would like. You don't have to, but if you want to for an extra five bucks, you can also get the making of the pinch. And it's basically a three hour webinar that I did. And I go through the whole process from top to bottom on how I actually made this movie. Um, it's, you're writing the low budget script, raising money pre-production, post-production, um, production. And I talk about the budget and not just how much money I raised, but I talk about where I spent that money as well. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, definitely check that out, sellingyourscreenplay.com slash The Pinch. Okay, and before I let you go, are there any sure. last remarks that you have? I'm sorry, say that again? Um, before I let you go, are there any last remarks that you have? No, I mean, as I said, I hope people get um, get some value out of this. I'm a, uh, you know, I'm always available. If people have questions or something, you can email me at info at sellingyourscreenplay dot com. Um, you know, we're kind of all in this together. We're all filmmakers. We're all artists. We're trying to do creative things. Um, so hopefully, people listen to my story and are inspired, maybe educated a little bit, um, and and go out and, and make their film. And that's, you know, I get so many emails from people running my own podcast, running my own blog. Um, you know, what should I do next? Or this is like, you just got to get out there and do stuff. Um, you know, that's why we're here. You know, we're not here to sit in our rooms by ourselves and think about things. We're here to actually go and make movies, make, you know, a product and get it out there and get a reaction from the world. Um, and that starts with just you getting up off your chair, even if it means getting your iPhone and two of your friends and just shooting a short film. Um, that way, that's something. You're creating something. Um, so that's my biggest advice is just go out there and just start creating stuff. You never know where it's going to lead. Ashley, I appreciate you taking the time out to talk with us today. Um, thank you, man. And once again, audience members, make sure y'all go check out The Pinch. And Ashley, once again, I thank you. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it, too. We'll right. talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later, man.